All right, welcome back to Wade 2025 on CWU-TV on YouTube. Uh, today we've been focusing on the changes in Jackson that require very little money or no money at all. Cultural changes, attitude changes, holding folks accountable. Folks, that's what we intend to do. Jackson is not broke in the sense that people think it's broke. It's broke because it has a poverty spirit that has descended upon us that we intend to lift up off us. Again, the things that we're talking about doing is going to require you and I to make some cultural changes and some attitude changes. And some of those things that's going to be required is that those of us who have been on the stage of life, who have been enjoying the best that America has to offer, we have to make room. We have to encourage our young folks to be more flexible. I've always said and I've always admired those young brothers in the rap game. The Tupacs, the Dr. Dre's, the Master P's, the Lil Wayne's, uh, these folks, 50 Cent, these folks put the rap game in a headlock. When Little Richard and all those, uh, Jackie, uh, 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 what's the guy's name? Anyway, all those uh, uh, artists from the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s were getting ripped off by the record companies. The young boy stood up there and said, hmm, now we ain't going out like that. And they changed. They put the rap game and they put the music game in a headlock. Now they're getting paid. They're selling less records and making more money. Folks, that's what we're talking about. Right now, the things that are holding Jackson back and holding many of the black communities across this country back are three groups of Negroes. The set-aside Negroes, the black for a living Negroes, and the free-to-land Negroes. Now, Kim, first of all, what do you mean? This, give us a definition of a set-aside Negro. A set-aside Negro is those individuals who have been taking advantage of the set aside programs, the affirmative action programs, et cetera. Don't get me wrong, affirmative action has been around a long time. In fact, I got a, uh, when Maynard Jackson was alive, when I was in Atlanta, Maynard got us jobs out at the airport. I worked at Eastern Airlines, a couple of my friends worked at Delta. No, I worked at Delta. And a couple of other of my friends worked at Eastern Airlines and yada, yada, yada. But the deal was this here. Those were slots made available through the, through the affirmative action program. But back then, it was a whole different ball game. Affirmative action, for instance, when uh, Judge Henry Wingate was coming up, when the Stimley sisters and brothers were going to Harvard, those folks actually had to stand and deliver. They didn't get in there on no shallow academic uh, credentials. They came in there ready for prime time. And now we're starting to let things slide. And what we have now are a bunch of set-aside Negroes who, for instance, did the water sewer Siemens contract. They gave us the green weenie. I'm talking about a green weenie this long. We ain't putting up with that no more. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. We, the citizens of Jackson, will no longer pay a dollar and a quarter and a dollar and fifty for services and products for minority set-aside folks just so we can say we got minority set-aside folks. We can't afford it. First of all, the white power structure that ran Jackson is long gone. It's all ran by black folk. So when we are doing the set-aside programs the way they're presently being done, all we're doing is tithing to these Negroes. Oh, no. Or in the words of uh, uh, Bishop Bullwinkle, hell to the no. No, 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 no. We're not doing that anymore. And they can get offended. They can take it personal. But you ain't taking no more money. Not like that. Now, I'm not saying you can't bid on contracts. We're just not going to give you an extra point for you being black. Uh -uh. And then the way, way they got it set up, they got this Asian girl, I believe, down in Atlanta. They put her on every contract. So pretty much every contract that they do on the minority set aside, she get like 1%. So she'll get a check for $100,000 out of nowhere just because they put her name. Mm -mm. See, that $100,000 can go towards street repair. I ain't into Asians like that. I ain't into black folks like that. So I'm just telling you, that's the kind of stuff that's going to get broken up at the door day one should I become mayor of this city. And again, I know there'll be folks out there who will, want me to run just so they can vote against me. I understand that. I'm not your huckleberry. If you're, interested, if you're interested in complaining about the past, racism, sexism, ism, ism, I'm not your huckleberry. But if you're interested in the things working, streets getting fixed, things like that, baby, I'm telling you, I'm your guy. But if all you want is trying to get your boys in there where they can make an extra, and see the thing about it, a lot of these set-aside Negroes, as I call them, it ain't like they intentionally doing wrong is but because they're working with in many cases too many corrupt officials within the government 
then what we end up doing, as I said, paying more for the services and in many, in many cases, the services aren't even being delivered. We just spent a half a billion dollars on water meters in the city of Jackson, meters that had really one, they weren't broke. But you had a group of folks who got together and said, you know what, I got this plan, man, we can do this here and man, we can hit a lick. And they did. And now that half a billion dollars has basically destroyed the financial wherewithal of the city of Jackson. And remember, when we pay these set aside extra quarters and 50 cent per dollar, all we doing is tithing to these Negroes. Oh, no, I don't think so. I'll, I told you I ain't into black folks like that. I'm sorry. Call me Uncle Tom. You can call me Aunt Sue. You, I don't care. I'm breaking it up at the door. Because these old folks, you know, do you realize many of our old black folks in their 80s, 90s, and up in there, that in their entire life, they probably had about a 10 year, 10 or 15 year window where they actually had some real peace, where they could go to town and not worry about some young white boy uh, accosting them, accusing them of doing something, and, not, and they not making it home safe. And now in their old age, they can't go to town worrying about some young black child doing the same thing. Oh no, see, things have gotten too far gone. That's why I'm saying we're gonna break some things up. Now that's what I say about the set aside Negroes. Who are the free to land Negroes? Those, that, those are the chalk line Lumumba folks. You know chalk lines and what's his, assist, his assistant? Umba, Huma, Hondo, whatever his name is. I remember when those Negroes running around and he trying to look like Malcolm and chalk lines just tailing along and they talking about free to land and all that stuff. And now that they done got papered up, bro, you don't hear them talking about that no more. Folks, listen to what I'm telling you. I don't care what anybody tell you. Whatever ism they push, nationalism, communism, gayism, blackism, whatever ism it is, at the end of the day, capitalism is what run everything. When Kim Jong-il over there in uh, North Korea talk all that communism crap, when the Communist Chinese Party talk all that communism crap, when they want some uh, uh, Cavassier, when they want some Levi blue jeans, you know what they gotta have? Dollar bills, y'all, Deutschmarks, pesos. And these folks know it. Chalk lines know it. The set-aside Negroes know that. But everybody doing this for you. We doing this for the brother man. We doing this for the motherland. Yada, yada. No, Negro. Uh-uh. I ain't buying that no more. I bought that under, under Farrakhan. Oh, we're going to build this and we're going to build that. The Moonies who were operating at the same time when I was in the nation, they'd be on one corner selling flowers, and we'd be on one corner selling those plums in newspaper. The Moonies made their money, bought hotels and newspapers all across the world, and we still out here renting. Uh -uh. The game is over, dog. These young folks got to eat. And I encourage you young folks out there, y'all need to get involved with politics, both Republican and the Democrat Party. Put this game in a headlock. These old heads, they are beholden to the Democrat Party to the exclusion of everything that works. And that's why I'm talking about attitude changes and cultural changes. We need to have a talk with the Derek Johnsons of the world, with the Benny Thompsons of the world, with the Ben Jealouses of the world. Dude, what kind of uh, arrangements are y'all setting up? Are y'all getting us into as black folks? Because this crap is like sharecropping. It's like we ain't gonna ever get caught up. Whenever we have a good crop, we go in there to sell up. We still in a hole. This is like paying your Comcast bill. Don't matter how much, how much you pay those boys, you always a month behind. And this kind of stuff is over with. And this is why I said there's a new sheriff in town. I'm the last of the honest to God, no nonsense Negroes. I ain't smiled since 1969. And really, I wasn't smiling in that picture. I think I had gas. So I'm just telling you, things are gonna change. So for four years, if I become mayor of this city, all that BS that they've been doing, now don't get me wrong, the set-aside Negroes and everybody else who want to bid on city contracts will still be able to bid on them. You just ain't going to, look, rather than y'all being and make a killing, you're going to make a profit. Because when you're making a killing, and then you make your money and then go move out to Madison, that's what Harvey Johnson did. Do did did y'all know that? He talked all that old black crap. He talked all that I'm an urban planner. And then when he got papered up, got his money, got his sack, he moved out there under Mary Hawkins, where he really got some good city services. Nah, bro, we're going to keep it real. I live here in Jackson, been here in Jackson, and we're going to make this thing work. But at the end of the day, 
as I've said before, everybody's going to eat. Everybody's got to eat. Everybody's going to be able to get your role on. You'll be able to do business with the city of Jackson. Even if you don't agree with my politics, you're still going to be able to get fair shaking in the city of Jackson if I'm running. If somebody's dogging you out from the city and you happen to be one of my political opponents, you're still going to get good city services because we need the money to flow. This ain't rocket science, baby. They're doing it everywhere else. But what we have to do is put ourselves in a position where we can take advantage of these things. And what we have to do, we have to break up at the door, is all these Negroes who are taking advantage of other black folks simply because they are tra they're trafficking in the trust that the average black person has for them as a leader, as a higher up, as a spiritual leader, as a business leader, as a political leader. So what we're going to ask for and what we're going to demand and what we're going to get is accountability. I don't mean maybe, I don't mean perhaps. So if you can't stand pain, you need to vote for that other guy. But if you want change, I'm your huckleberry. Everybody's going to eat. Everybody's going to be able to get their role on. We've gone as far as we can go in the direction we're headed. Every city councilman will have a set of pothole fillers that they can call on and say, look, I got a pothole over here on the corner of uh, Mobile and Woodrow Wilson. Put it on the list to get done, and they're going to be on it. City council member will be able to walk directly into that director's office of any agency in, this, in the city and say, hey, this is what my concerns are. They ain't got to go through the mayor. We're cutting out all this petty crap. And to the business owner, baby, y'all be, be carrying the radio strongman around on your shoulders because we're going to do business in Jackson. Everybody in Jackson who wants to eat is going to eat. And everybody who wants to get their roll on will be able to get their roll on. So this is your host, Radio Strongman. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in 22 hours. Number one, I am a rock rib conservative, unabashedly so. Many of you listen to the program know that. And when I talk about conservatism, do for self is as conservative as it comes. I'm a capitalist. I believe in the free enterprise system. I believe that people need to get paid. They call me get paid way. I want everybody to eat. Everybody's got to eat. Now here's the deal. I invite your participation going forward. I want you to continue to watch CWU TV and listen to the Kim Wade Show at WYAB 103.9 FM, WYAB.com, Monday through Fridays from four to six. Continue to listen in, add your input, and see if we can be the example for all of America to point to and say, they're doing it right down in Jackson, Mississippi. Mm. Now there's a message in there for a believer. 